Hey guys, welcome back to the Man Cave with Big Kev. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is episode eight of the Emergency Box series. And in this episode, we're gonna go over tools and equipment that you can keep in your box to help you get through that first 72 hours. So let's get into it. All right, so this is gonna probably make up a bulk of what your box contains because there's so much stuff that you can put in these kits, which is of course tailored to your needs. So these are just a few things that I would highly recommend that everyone have. So let's get into it. So we're gonna go over gloves. Gloves are a great idea to keep your hands from getting cuts and abrasions, from the cleanup afterwards to performing other tasks. Uh, such as tying your tarp down and all that sort of stuff. Your gutters can be a bit sharp. You might get cuts on your hands. So cuts and abrasions on your hands are a no-no. Look after them because they do everything for you. And also, they go near your face. So your eyes, ears, nose and mouth are very susceptible to uh, absorbing stuff, uh, germs and all that sort of stuff. So keeping good care of your hands is going to be paramount. Lighting, so always have a flashlight in your kit, some form of lighting. So I've got a couple of different options here. Obviously we have this dolphin style torch. Uh, this one's flat, I just picked it out of a box to show you because this is not going in my kit, but it's just an example. Uh, also we've got these little button ones here that you can hang off the kids and, and yourself. And these are really good $2 lights from Kmart. So really nice to just hang on a pocket somewhere so you've got light with your all times also you can have yourself a lantern an led lantern i do not recommend gas because if, especially if you've got kids because it's just a bit of a fire hazard um, went to bunnings for five bucks i picked up one of these things so it's just a normal light switch with some really bright leds in there and they come with some adhesive pads on the back there so you can stick them to the wall. Um, these are good for kids as well because um, it's, it's familiar. It's a switch which they're familiar with and it gives off some really good light. And you can plaster these things around the house. I bought two, so maybe one for each entrance. So another good option there. Uh, we'll skip the, that one there just for now, but we'll go over batteries. So when, you've, when you're building your kit, just take note of what equipment that you have in there and what batteries it takes. So always carry extra batteries for any of your devices that you have. And it's always a good idea to store them in the packets, not in plastic bags jingling around because they can make contact and they can essentially drain your batteries and it's just and they can corrode and it's just not good so you can buy little battery packs if you don't want to carry a full set of batteries or a full packet of batteries in your kit and that's going to reduce weight and size in that kit as well um, when you do have your devices if you are going to store batteries in the device itself it's always a good idea i do it with all my stuff uh, is turning a battery around so making sure that that doesn't make a connection is going to stop those um, it's going to break that circuit and it's going to stop them from having charge run through them and they're not going to corrode as well these batteries have been sitting in here for six six to eight months and they haven't corroded so that's a really good thing to remember actually we will go over this one now which is communications uh, Having a radio and a UHF, uh, I think, are very good ideas. This is going to keep you up to date because your TV is not going to be working if the power's out. This is going to keep you up to date with weather and what emergency services are up to and all that sort of stuff. So communication is key. Having a UHF, you can hear what local people are talking about on the radio as well. So you don't have to leave the home uh, so you can stay safe. So a FM, AM radio and a UHF are a really good idea as well. 
A battery bank. So having a battery bank is just going to enable you to keep your devices charged for longer, especially if the kids' iPads go flat and they're driving your balmy, you can charge them up. And this one here is solar powered as well, so it'll charge via solar. They do take a little while to charge, and if the weather's bad, not really going to help you. But I can get two charges on my phone out of one battery bank, so that's really cool. And this one here I bought from Aldi, and it's not a little, it's not a bad little unit actually. It's got uh, the power indicator there, and it's also got a light as well. So another really good item to have. Also with stuff like this. It's always a good idea when you're checking your emergency box for expiry dates that you check your electronic equipment to see if it's got full charge in it as well. There's absolutely no use keeping it in there if it's going to be flat. That brings us to extra cords. If you do have to evacuate your home, you want to make sure that you've got the right cords to charge your gear. So you might forget the one that's plugged in beside the bed. So having some extra cords there on hand is a really good idea as well. Just a sewing kit, this is the one that I keep in my camping bag or my bug out bag and it's got all sorts of needles in there, safety pins, so many uses for safety pins it's not funny. Uh, extra thread, I've got the uh, inner strands of paracord for heavy duty stuff that you can use with your sail needles and stuff like that. So. A really nice comprehensive sewing kit is going to be good for repairing your clothes, tarps, any sort of equipment that's got holes in it. Okay, cutting equipment. So I really highly recommend that you carry yourself some cutting tools. Now, I carry a folding knife every day. So I use one of these every day for various tasks. So if you're caught out, at least you got something if you're, if you're carrying something around every day. Check your local laws about carrying knives in public, all right? Because if you get caught with one, even with a multi-tool, you can get into trouble. So just be careful with carrying something every day like that. I would highly recommend something like a Mora knife. These things are cheap and they are sharp and they are tough. My God, these are a good knife. And this is going to help you with a lot of stuff processing food, um, cutting rope, all the heavy duty stuff that you need to cut can be done with one of these. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, very highly recommended in the bushcrafting and prepper community because of the price and the quality that you're getting for the price. You just can't beat a mora for the price. Also a pair of scissors would help you out as well. Um, I know in your first aid kit you might have some trauma shares in there, but you don't really want to use those just in case you need them to be sharp for cutting clothes off someone so that you can fix them up. Okay, so fixing and such things. Just a little packet of super glue there is really good. Now, at a pinch you can use these in a dire situation for stitches as well. Only in a dire situation because they do have medical grade stuff for that purpose, but at a pinch, in a really dire situation, you can use uh, super glue to fix up people as well as items of clothing or whatever the case may be. A couple of rolls of duct tape are really good as well. These are going to help you patch up tarps also, if uh, you're in cyclone or hurricane land, you can uh, ultimately tape up your windows with duct tape and it's going to help in broken glass not going everywhere. It's going to somewhat hold that together. So that's really good. Uh, LD had some of this emergency repair stuff and I actually really like this stuff. It's, it's, it's stretchy, it bonds to itself and I just really like this tape. It's, I've used it before. I have used it on a hose, but it didn't really work to stop a leak. Um, but this is really good stuff. It's, it's really tough, and there's a lot of uses for it. A lot. 
so you can use it for your car it's uh, the temperature is minus 50 to plus 260 degrees Celsius so really good stuff to have there guys good for radiator hoses and stuff for your car all that sort of jazz this one here a metal bottle is going to help you greatly to be able to sterilize water I do believe we went over this in the food section but uh, having a metal container is going to help you in boiling water and um, essentially just holding water as well so that's a that's a really good idea plates and cutlery so I really like the enamel stuff here because you can double it as a fry pan you can chuck that on heat and it's not going to affect your plate you can cook on it and then you can save on dishes because you can cook on it and then eat off eat off it just be careful that once it's hot don't touch it <laughs> all right disclaimer in regards to the cutlery you can buy some really good camping cutlery some plastic stuff that's lightweight and it's not going to take up too much room in your emergency box now I think the most important thing that we have to add here which I don't have on the table is a USB stick get yourself an, a reasonably large USB stick with a waterproof container so that you can store it in there and it's nice and safe it's not going to be susceptible to moisture or anything like that and what that is going to contain is personal documents make sure you can go to officeworks they can scan all your birth certificates all your driver's licenses all your personal documents that are the most important that you will need if you get evacuated passports all that sort of stuff make sure that you get it scanned and put on a usb stick so you have all that information there for when you need it or when you need to produce it because in, in an emergency situation these things may be called upon for you to uh, present for certain things for whatever it may be so your personal documents are the most important thing that you're going to have to keep in your box also you can put a number of usb sticks in there with photos and what have you so you've got those personal memories there as well if you can't come back to your house because it's absolutely destroyed and you've lost all your photos and all that sort of stuff at least you have a backup of those things so that you don't lose those memories so that is the most important thing that you're going to need in this box so you may have noticed that the background looks a little bit different so i'm doing a little bit of changing around here i bought myself some steel shells here and I've also bought myself an emergency box or two. So I'm starting my emergency box journey along with you guys. And I've got a couple of boxes here that were from Bunnings. I think it was eight bucks for a massive box like that. They didn't have any black lids, which I wasn't too impressed about, but uh, the box is black which is going to stop the light from getting through the side there this is going to be covered by the next shelf up anyway so a nice big box here I, I bought two of them and I'm going to start loading one up and we'll see how we go this is as much my journey as what it is yours so I've got some water here already stored um, I'm going to get some sort of cover to cover that up and I'm going to buy more of that as well so I'm just going to keep everything here um, I've got a few things here that are going to come off it as I get more emergency gear and I've got another steel shelf coming as well so awesome times I want to learn with you guys and I want to lead by example as well so it's a really good idea that I do it as well <laughs> So there you have it guys there is a lot of stuff there a lot of options and uh, ideas don't forget the more experienced people put your two cents worth in of what else you can keep in your kit think outside the box don't forget to tailor it to your needs look at your area what do you need that you what are the potential issues that you could run into um, in your area that would warrant you keeping something in your box to help you through your 72 hours so thank you guys 
Go and check me out on Facebook and Instagram. I'm now on Patreon as well, so if you want to donate some money, that will go straight back into the channel. Uh, there's a link in the description. Don't forget to check out the description as well, guys. It is there. It does exist. So go and have a read at the little blog that I write there, and uh, all the links to my other platforms will be there also. So thank you very much for watching, and until the next video, I'll see you later. Thanks guys, bye.